don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Horror Hour TV. We all go a little mad. Don't forget you. Hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, the show where we discuss, debate, and disagree on all things horror. We're your hosts, Yutaka, George, and Ben, and today we're going to talk about and review the recent Fear Street Part 3, 1666. We're going to discuss our overall thoughts, our pros and cons, and then now that the trilogy is complete, we're actually going to give our ranking of each of the films. All right, so we we think it's best that uh, let's give you a recap of the movie. So um, for just a warning, um, there will be spoilers. Uh, So where we start out with this movie, um, we see that Dina is now back in the past in the Union settlement. It's 1666, and we see that she's seen the events through Sarah Fear's eyes. Uh, We see Sarah greeting the other kids. That signals there will be meeting that night at a party. And then you've got Sarah, Hannah, and Lizzie, who I am extremely happy was back. I love that actress. Um, And they go see the widow so they can get some special berries. Um, While there, Sarah does find a book that also has info on bargaining with the devil. Um, Sarah encounters the widow who kind of provides foreshadowing of what's to come. And then later that night at the party, Uh, we see that uh, Sarah and Dina have a bit of, or I'm sorry, Sarah and Hannah have a bit of a romantic uh, interlude. And the next day, the pastor seemingly now is possessed uh, and proceeds to then kill 12 of the town's kids with himself being the 13th victim when he's stopped by Solomon Good. Uh, Essentially then what follows is just a good old fashioned witch hunt. Sarah and Hannah are deemed witches and to be hanged. And then um, Sarah is caught, or um, while Hannah is caught, Sarah actually runs and goes to Solomon for help. He says he believes her. um, And then during that course uh, where Sarah is essentially, I guess, trying to find a place to hide in uh, in his home, that's where we get the plot twist that really the witch is not Sarah. It's actually Solomon Good. And he made a bargain with the devil. And so as long as he gives the devil a soul, then he gets whatever he wants. Um, and so there's a chase and a fight in the caves. Um, this is where also Sarah loses her hand. And then uh, eventually she is caught and hung. Um, and in doing so does leave a curse pretty much on the land um and then we'll cut that out some of that i don't know (laughs) all right so then uh which is my favorite part and kind of also another twist i enjoyed that um they cut to 1994 part two um all the characters are caught up to speed and we see our characters prepare for a final showdown with all the different killers that we've seen throughout the series and sheriff good um, it takes place at the Shady Side Mall. There we see them set up traps throughout. Uh, in the end, uh, adult Ziggy gets to confront uh, Sheriff Good, and we see a callback to 1978 where he gets carried. And uh, essentially, because he's got now the blood all over him, killers go after him. Uh, now, while this happens, uh, um, the sheriff is injured. Chase scene ensues between then Sheriff Good and Dina. The other cast or the other characters are dealing with the killers and then eventually Dina is able to stop the sheriff and then the killers are vanquished and then shady side is now looking much better and in the end our characters do get some closure uh, while Sunnyvale is no longer the place to be and in the final shot uh, during the credits we do see that the book is stolen and with that the trilogy is complete I guess I will start with the pros and cons. So for me, um, I would say with the pros, much bigger world building. I, uh, I loved that we got to expand on the lore. Uh, I enjoyed that we saw the previous actors come back as their ancestors. Um, I really, really enjoyed the score during the 1666. Um, 
setting, um, which was Marco Beltrami, Anna Drubik, and Marcus Trump. I hope I didn't butcher those names, but I really did enjoy that score a lot. And even once we cut back to 1994, that was still just, you know, kind of had those nostalgic vibes. Um, really enjoyed the cast in this one. I think they were they were stronger than they were in the first one. And I loved that final showdown, though, with all the killers. That was so cool. Um, I really enjoyed the callback to the previous films, just with random either uh, setups or gag. I wouldn't say gags, but, you know. And then I, I really liked that Pastor Miller scene. I thought that was creepy, messed up, and I thought they did a good job. Uh, as for the cons, it was a bit too long, so the pacing was a little off. And I actually am also not a fan of the cave scenes because we already saw so much of that in the previous one that I felt like we saw too much of that in this one. So. Is that all your cons? Should I have more? I really did no, enjoy I was, this one. I, was, yeah. <laughs> I really, um, the first time, I will say the first time I watched it because of the length, uh, I was not a fan. And so after watching it a second time, I actually really became, or I began to enjoy it, really get invested again. Um, I was prepared for the length of the movie, I guess, even though I could have looked at the runtime, but I just, um, I really enjoyed it a second time around. And I have actually watched it three times. So I feel like I did enjoy it. Mm. I didn't have, um, it, if the pacing were better, um, I wouldn't have, I don't know, that pacing was off, but the pacing's been off at least within the last, or um, 1978 and for 1666. But that would be mine. Hmm. I think I agree with pretty much everything you said there. I loved this movie. It was by far my favorite of the trilogy. I thought it was really incredible. My favorite parts, I suppose my pros, my biggest was how incredible the twists were. Yutake, you told us last week that the good family is really important and stuff like that. And it's true. They turned out to be really, really important to the story. And in such an incredible way, I was screaming and like it was really an enjoyable, like punching the air type film. And I ate up every second of it. And something that I've been saying for the past two films was that I really hope that 1666, when it arrives, that all of this pays off and it all comes together and it all did expertly. And that was, it was so relieving that it did because it all kind of hinged on this movie. And I did not have a lot of faith going in based on what both of you two said and the lack of online discussion for it. <laughs> so I, I, I really didn't think that it would, it would pay off. But once we got, I enjoyed the 1666 portion quite a bit. I thought um, the story in this film, this is probably another pro, the story is stronger than all of the other films. And you don't necessarily need a lot of kills in the movie because you're really invested in what's going on. And I thought that was a really commendable thing that they were able to pull off here. But 1994 part two was like, almost as, like an Avengers Endgame of this trilogy. It's like I had known these characters for a really long time and I was really invested in how it was going to pay off. And so, it was just a pure adrenaline ride from uh, the end of 1666 to the end credits. I thought it was really incredible. Speaking of incredible things, uh, the third act was amazing. I, I have some of that in my cons. I don't have a lot of cons because I overall really liked this film. But the third act really and truly was the culmination of, of everything we we had come to know in this trilogy. So I'm, I'm happy it played out the way that it did. So, um, George, what were your pros? Um, so I have some. I <laughs> feel like I watched a completely different film to everybody else. I in, so I in, really I I enjoyed nineteen ninety four part two. Okay, um, the the first part of the film, I just found it really boring and even the second time I was like oh okay like and obviously yeah there's 
the twist that it was him. Um, it, I wasn't, obviously, ex- I didn't expect that. But also in the same sense, I wasn't like you, Ben, going, oh, my God. I was just like, oh, OK. Um, <laughs> I assumed there was more to the story anyway with the fact that I was I was thinking, I really doubt that it's going to be that Sarah Fear was this witch who blah, blah, blah. Um, so I kind of had expected that. Also, not me only realising in the third episode, this is called Fear Street because of Sarah Fear. I was like, <laughs> I know Sarah Fear. And then, then they like pan to Fear Street. I was like, oh yeah, that's why. Anyway, sorry. Um, I, I've never been, and I mentioned this in um, last week's episode, I've never been a fan of a period piece. Um, I didn't I didn't enjoy The Witch. Um, and to me, that was what this was. Although it didn't, it, this wasn't as, I don't think The Witch was its homage. Like, I think that was something that was lacking as well, is the last two films have really had, they've been based on a film Mm -hmm. per se. So with like Friday the 13th and Scream, they were really, you could tell. With this one, there was elements of The Witch, but I feel like this one didn't have as much of a, this was like kind of its own thing that they were going with, which is fine. But sorry, I know this is supposed to be um, positives. I really enjoyed the second half of the film I really liked the big, like you said, but I liked that we got to see these characters come together at the end. And I really liked the neon lights were back. So I loved it. Oh. That it was set in, in the, the mall. It was really cool. And I loved when they turned the lights off and they'd spray paint everything with like the glow in the dark. I was like, okay, this is cool. So I really, really enjoyed it. I could watch that 40 minute bit a lot. Um, but because I think the first half wasn't for me personally, I think that kind of tinted my view for the rest of the film because I was kind of like oh so I was really and I genuinely remember thinking I was so happy when it came up saying 1994 part two because I was thinking I do not want a two-hour film set in this era I I feel like that flashback could have been 15 minutes personally but that's just me but as I say positives I really enjoyed the finale I really liked seeing all the characters I liked seeing Ziggy come back and I loved the confrontation between um, Ziggy and Nick I thought that was really cool and actually even to I can prove that I enjoyed this film because I did tear up when Ziggy went to Nurse Lane at the end and gave her back the book and I was like oh okay that that made me a little bit weepy Uh, (laughs) so yeah for me the pros were and the music was great there was a lot of good as i say i I mean i love marco of his music and scream and everything's fantastic so i'm a big fan but yeah for me the pros were mainly the second half of the film to me was the stronger part of the film and i'm glad that we got to see that and i'm interested to see obviously what the ending meant and what is in the future for Fear Street, because I haven't written this series off completely. Um, I would like to see what where it goes next. I know that I saw an interview um, with Leah who said, you know, that we have got ideas. That was why we did the, you know, for the, the final scene was was that. So, hey, I'm looking I'm looking forward to, to seeing what what comes next with Fear Street. Good thing this film didn't have Anya Taylor Joy. You would have hated it. Oof. Jesus, don't don't claim like that. Have you done your cons, Ben, or did I make that up? <laughs> I didn't do. I did not do my cons. I only have three. Okay. Well, you better do yours then, because mm. mine will take a while. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Yeah. Um, Americans need need to stop trying to do Irish accents because they're really really bad at them all. Um, and I mean every I mean even Irish actors are terrible at doing Irish accents in American movies. Truly, just atrocious. I think the only one who was able to really pull it off, I think Dina was um, relatively fine at doing it because she had the most amount of screen time. Uh, you, it, 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 I think she lost it. I think she just pretended that it wasn't there for a lot of the time, but she was okay. But the guy who was the killer in 1978, he was he's probably the best actor, I would say. He's the most game to do anything in this entire trilogy, and he was pretty incredible in this. He was the only other person that I would say was very good at maintaining the accent and committing to his character. I think everybody else, nobody was able to do it. I wanted more killers in the finale. I wanted more of them. I didn't feel like we got enough. I wish that that sequence had gone on for a lot longer, maybe an extra five or 10 minutes, just to kind of get into the nitty gritty of their plan, 
and to kind of truly see it play out instead of kind of, I felt like it rushed like a small bit, not very much because um, again, my, the third act was in my positives, but I wish it was just the, the slightest bit longer. And this is kind of um, something for a bit of a con for the whole trilogy in that it's, it is, it is and it's not, but it is very streaming and how not everything gets its full impact. You need to watch it a few times to, to see things kind of hit. But when I talk about things not getting its impact, I mean lines of dialogue and stuff like that. Things that I do not, something that I did not thought hit well at all was the pastor was nowhere near as scary as I thought he was going to be. And I thought that was a complete disappointment just for me because I kind of built it up in my mind for so long. But I was really disappointed about how the pastor played. It wasn't really scary that, um, that much. But overall, it was an excellent end to the trilogy and I hope it's the first of many more Fear Streets to come. I still like the pastor part. I don't think he was scary. Yes, I thought the um, sequence was just, I thought it was just creepy. And I thought it was, the tone was, I liked the tone. But no, I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Because I, I just, it had that creepy atmosphere and I, I did like that. But let's hear, uh, let's hear George. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. I feel like I like people might think that I played because I feel like for the past all the episodes we've done so far I've had something really controversial say like, I'm not trying to purposely be controversial I just um I have a lot of feelings so right Fear Street 1666 first of all I would like to agree with Ben on the accents I just said it's just better not to do them at this point because no one's going to be bothered no one's going to go oh they should have had you know, colonial accents coming over from Ireland and the and England, whatever. So, because I felt like that the only person I felt has ever been able to do a good transatlantic old accent was Kathy Bates in American Horror Story Roanoke. She's the only one I will allow um, because she is Kathy Bates. But everyone else, I think it's really difficult to either, you either get an American actor who's trying to, do an Irish accent or you get Irish and English actors who are trying to do a, a combination of both. I think it's a very difficult accent to, cause nobody really, it's a, it was a very muddled accent at the time. So I think anyway, it's a difficult accent to get. So you can allow for those, you know, that's why I think it always sounds weird as well because it was a weird accent. So I get that, but yeah, I just think it's just best not to do it. Cause it takes, for me at times it took away because the way she was pronounced and stuff, I was like, it took me out of the, I was like, just thinking about the way she pronounced things. Um, and again, I'm talking about Dina because again, or, or Sarah, because she had the most amount of screen time and, and, and speaking. And I felt like some people just weren't doing, some people had just American accents as well. So I just kind of like, well, just pick one, just do either. I'm fine. Just, but maybe just stick with American because you're seeing this through your eyes. I, that again is another thing in itself. Then I also put not the stock shock sound when Sarah slapped that lad. They, there was a part where they're at the fire pit and I can't remember the, the guy's name. I think not Tommy was the, the weirdo one. The, there was another character who was trying to flirt with Hannah Miller. And he was like, oh, come into the woods. And she was like, no, no, get off me. And Sarah came up and slapped him and was like, she doesn't want to go with you. And they had the, the stock there. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, they didn't just put that in. So I, I was like, it's not hard to have people do that. That was that again took me out. These are a lot of these things are things that just took me out of the movie. And again, this could just be because I am tainted by the fact I do not like this type of show. So you know, don't come for me. I'm just giving my opinions. But one that I really, they did not waste Sadie Sink like that. Sadie Sink had about one line, and then that was it. And the fact that last week we talked about how we wanted to see more of Sadie Sink and they did that and they were like, she's going to have one line and she's going to walk off. I would have preferred, um, again, maybe I prefer, I like Sadie Sink. I think she's great. So I just think it was really sad. that. And the same with the brother as well. I mean, I really enjoyed him in, it, I thought he was great, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin's the actor's name, sorry. Um, but I thought he was really great. And so, again, I suppose it was to lead with the story that the kids died and stuff. But I was like, could we not just done that a bit later on? Because I really would have liked to have seen a bit more. But I suppose the story is about Sarah Fear. So I shall let that slide. But first, because I was waiting and this just shows like I at the end, I got it. But when they were 
talking about the reveal of, oh my God, it was Solomon good. And, you know, I put, but like, who cares? Like, <laughs> about the truth, who really cares? Like now, like it was like 400 years ago. But then obviously, like it came into play that it was had continued over time. So at that point, I thought it was just Solomon good. And I was like, bitch, that was 400 years ago. Let it go. So anyway, I crossed that out. 19, yeah, 94 part was very good, actually. Um, the bit that I hated and I cringed so much at this line was good is evil. Oh, I was like, yeah. no, I was like, don't. So that was the part where Dino was saying to her brother and he was like, what's it? She's like, it's detective good is evil. And I was like, oh, that made me, I had to stop because I was like, that's too much. Then something, this isn't a con, this is just a question for the for the good family. So if the good family are listening, why would you settle to be the sheriff of a small town if you had the power of Sarah Fear? They're like, I can be anything. I can do anything. But I'm going to be a sheriff in a small local town in the Midwest. Great. Well, I'm glad that you've set your goals high there. I just thought they could have been, you know, maybe that's something that can come into play more. Maybe the next person who takes the book will have higher goals and will be like, bitch, you know, let's do this Omen 3 style. Let's be the president of the United States. So <laughs> I, don't know, I would have gone for something like that. But I just kind of thought it was a bit weird. And then I was just really confused how they went into it was the middle of the night. Um, when they were fighting and then when they came out of Sheriff Good's house it was like really sunny and I was like oh suddenly it's the middle of the day but I think I think that's it oh another, and another question I had and maybe this is this might not be a con because somebody might be able to answer it for me here Ben Yusaka please Sarah Fia says during the part when we realize that it's Solomon I will show them all what you did and then we cut to like a flash thing where she, where you see Ziggy touch and Sam touch the body. Now, my question is, did Ziggy and Sam see what Dina saw? Because hmm. did they did, because she's like, I will show them what you did. And every time they'd like touch, it was like, I thought, oh, did they see, did they go back in time? And they, cause she's like, I'll show them what you did. And then shows, then it fl- hits her a flashback of them all whoever touched the hand and stuff. And it was like, oh, do you know that bit where it goes? Woo! And we were talking about, we really liked how that went. Did they all see that? Why was it that Dina was the one who saw? Was it because she returned the hand? To the body? Yeah. Because um, I was thinking, well, if Ziggy and Sam had seen that, then they would already know what had happened. Like they would know that it was the good family. So maybe they didn't. I just didn't. I just wanted to know why it was. Dina and then I was like mm, is it that maybe somewhere down the line Dina literally is a like are the, I would have liked to know the explanation if they were all directly descendants of the people that they were playing because mm-hmm. or if they were like because re- then that makes more sense about like the whole Sam and Dina relationship is that like they were a reincarnation of Sam of um Hannah and Sarah which would have been like, oh, you know, it was love across the ages. Or was it just that? Because I think that that took me out was that uh, because at the end, we then saw the, you know, before Sarah was hanged, we saw like the real Sarah fear. And then I was like, oh, well, I think it would have been nice. I mean, she was a good actress, but it would have been nice not to see her because we didn't see who everyone else was in, in real life. Like we saw the characters that we portrayed. So I just thought it got, I was just a little bit confused with who everyone was supposed to be. Because at first I thought that Solomon Good was just like some immortal god. And then I remembered that we had Nick Good as a kid, so it couldn't have been him. But yeah, for me, I just it wasn't this film wasn't created for me, and that's fine. I enjoyed many elements of it, but for me, I probably if it hadn't have been for this podcast, I probably wouldn't have watched. I probably would have turned it off. Sorry. Ouch. And that and that's my that's my that's my cons. I just don't think this film was for me. And I just yeah, there was just it just wasn't for me. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. We've all got our own opinions. And that was mine. Thank you. Wrong and correct, we still have them. That's correct. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> before we go to our break then, um what I guess number ranking just out of you know a score of ten would you give it? Eight point five out of ten. I'd give it. I was thinking around an eight. I I really enjoyed it. Mm. Okay, well let's go for a break. 
No. Let's I would <laughs> answer. I would give it a five out of ten. Ooh, that's a uh, bit harsh. I would give. Oh, I would break it up. I would give the first hour three out of ten. And I'd give the second hour six out of ten. Dang. Sorry, everybody who's listening that's likes Fear Street. It just wasn't for me. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. All right, we'll take our break. <laughs> you are listening to the Horror Hour with Ben, George, and Utaka. And we're back. So um, now again that the trilogy is over, we're going to go ahead and rank our... Um, rank the series but i do want to take a moment because i will say um <laughs> i don't know if you've seen on twitter how people have gotten a little out of hand with their rankings and um disagreeing with each other which we probably will do but uh i think overall it's the fact that um, one at least for me i still enjoyed all of them uh, it, it was a horror trilogy all of them directed by the same female which i think is great because we really don't get to see that um, in the industry. And also, I mean, it, the entire trilogy centered around um, a lesbian couple, which again, I think is also amazing. Um, so that was actually probably one of, I just want to call that out because I don't want people to overlook that because I think that's a huge accomplishment in its own right. Um, you know, even though it is 2021 and we should be past all that, I do think that's really impressive. So, agreed. But I will let Ben start because I've I might be changing my ranking. Okay. Well, I suppose what well, we just got number three. Everyone's number three. Everyone's number two, and then everyone's number one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So with that, my number three is Fear Street Part Two, 1978, and I have that with a six out of ten. I just wasn't really impressed with this movie. It was really slow. But what I did like, I really did like. So I think it does definitely earn um, the fresh. It could maybe be a 6.5 upon rewatch. I've only rewatched the first one. But for now, number three is Fear Street Part 2, 1978. The highlights are the cast, obviously. They were all very good. And looking back, knowing what we know about how everything played out, it is interesting to go back and watch all of the films and to... Mm -hmm to see, oh, that happened there and he did that because of this and stuff like that. Particularly when regards to the good family, it was really interesting to, to kind of reflect on all of their actions. Truly sinister. I thought it was just incredible. So I, that stuff was just deadly. But again, it was really slow. It took forever to get going. And even when it did get going, we didn't really get to see a lot of the kills because the lighting was so poor. Uh, unlike in 1994, and even 1666, where, where you could see everything, I felt bad that I wasn't able to see a lot of the killer in this film. And that was a, that was a, a killer for me. So that's my number three. George? Yeah, I think 1970 is probably my three as well, which I know is shocking because I just slandered 1666. But 1666 gets off purely because of the second half of the film, which I enjoyed more than... 1978 but like you I say 1978 I agree I really like the cast I loved Sadie Sink with for me it was the standout there and I really loved the scene between her and her sister at the end the kill scene between those two was Ooh. brilliant and like you say now looking back it is interesting to you know how much more um evil that last bit is with as Sadie is taken out sorry as Ziggy is taken out um in the ambulance and she says it's real the curse is real and nick says you know oh it was just him he went he went crazy which obviously in hindsight now is like oh we thought he was just trying to be you know he what he was just trying to clock it all out because he was trying to be the good sheriff but he was a dick so i enjoyed that but i agree yeah i just thought it was really slow i didn't feel like a lot happened and i just yeah i get it I say I like Marco, but some of those music choices, maybe it wasn't him because the music was good, but whoever inserted the music and decided to have it on 150% volume during some scenes, I was like, it's not the one. So that would be my number three. Yutaka, what about you? Um, I would actually go with 1666. 
because uh, if I think about how many times I've rewatched the films, I've rewatched that one the least. While that ending is fantastic, and I think at least on the second or third rewatch, I really began to enjoy some of the choices they made. Um, just as Ben called out, and I wish I <laughs> maybe I just tuned it out. The accents are terrible, and the pacing's really rough. Uh, and the third one for me, um, so I I loved the story. I just. Uh, I wasn't there for that one in terms of if I look at the entire series as a whole, I enjoyed it, but I would say it would be my least. It would be number three for me. I shouldn't say least because again, I still love the entire series, but yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, My number two is probably going to be both of yours. Number one, which is fear street part one, 1994. Having rewatched it, it is kind of slow. A lot of it doesn't make 100% sense, but it's still very enjoyable and the cast is incredible. I have it with a 7 out of 10. I really do dig it. And it's definitely set us up on a really interesting path with this trilogy. So I was um, I was pretty happy with how everything played out. So my number two is going to be Fear Street, part one, 1994. Okay, yeah, my second um, is going to be Fear Street 1994 Part 2, <laughs> because I'm excluding 1666, it's like way back. No, so yes, my second will be Fear Street 1666, purely because of 1994 Part 2. If 1666 had just been the first half, this would have not even been, like, it wouldn't even been on the spectrum for me. So I'm giving... 1666 second place purely for 1994 part two because it gave me everything i needed and as you will have guessed by my num what my number one is i preferred those characters and i liked the setting and everything else so to see that come back for me was a big positive so yeah number two for me 1666 you um so my number two uh again i'm looking at how um how many times I've actually rewatched these films and I've rewatched the first and second one quite a bit. Um, But I would have to give number two to 1994. Uh, I loved the music. I, I, it just took me back and I loved the scream references and I loved, you know, the kills were super gory and we hated when certain characters died that we don't think should have. But I would actually, uh, and I oh, I also want to call out, I don't, since most people, again, I'm old or, you know, we have malls here that have the B. Dalton bookstores. Well, we did, but also seeing a Gadzooks, that cracks me up because I don't think those are around anymore as well. But 1994 part two would be uh, my second place. I know. I can't believe it. And I'll explain why. (laughs) I'll just go ahead and talk about my first pick then since since I'm getting those looks. (laughs) It's obviously, um, (laughs) I I, I know. I loved 1998. I know. Do you know, I've actually watched that uh, film now um, probably around 10 times. Right? On Let, purpose. So, yes. So I know I picked apart the film when I saw it the first time, but each time as I've rewatched it, I still can't get over how great Sadie Sink and Emily Rudd were. They just, they, they propelled that film for me. Um, I would even go back and change what I rated it, but I really just, I find it enjoyable and I, I hate some of the uh, like the speeding up on some of the shots. It's not one of my favorites, but even still, yes, we may not have been able to see the kills as, as well as we would have liked to, but when they started, they went fast and they just went hard. I mean, you don't really see many horror films that kill kids. That's still like, Oh my gosh. But I you talk really... That's the point. I couldn't see him kill any fucking kids because the lighting was too dark. <laughs> well, that was on purpose. They he, took out the lighter, the candle. 
I'm just saying, I've seen that one so many times and on purpose. And I actually, I really, I just love the two lead characters. And as you guys do agree though, the, um, the brutal ending is just, my God, mm. so good and so gut-wrenching. And so for me, that's why <laughs> 1978 is actually my favorite because it to me i i can continue to rewatch that i could go turn it on right now and be fine with it george i think you should maybe go next i'll go last you all know what it is george <laughs> Reboot. Um, i and there's a you know there's a lot of people online who really like 1978 even some of my friends you know i've had conversations on twitter yesterday my friend niall was like you have really bad taste because i said <laughs> people I like people like 1978 um I think and again this could be again a whole personal preference thing I was my mum my <laughs> I was brought up on like 90s slasher films like that is what I knew so for me that was the vibe and I really enjoyed that first film I personally could have happily not had another film I would not have been bothered if it had just ended with her being like, and her stabbing her and being like, oh, the, you know, there's some, it continues. I didn't, I could say, I mean, it was nice I, that they did it. I just, I don't know. I just don't think Fear Street trilogy was meant for me as a viewer. I, I was really excited to watch it as well. I remember saying, I'm really excited to see how this goes. And I think it's a really interesting thing for it to be doing, you know, every week. And I have really enjoyed that. And I've really enjoyed covering it here. But yeah, I mean, I liked 1994 because it was basically like someone doing a fan-made version of a Scream and 90s slasher films. So for me, that is why it is number one. I liked the characters. I thought they were great. I loved all of the characters in that. I loved Dina. I loved, you know, all of them. They were brilliant. Kate, everyone just... And it really, I really felt like it was about a group of friends, which is what I really liked and I really loved the music and that was done well the opening scene was fantastic you know you re it really got me excited I love the settings it was just really good and so for me I would go back and watch 1994 I would probably not go back and watch it as a trilogy personally um I just I would have preferred an anthology series and her and part one to have been about just like these killers, this, this, whatever's going on personally. And maybe that could be something that happens in the future. You know, there's, lo there's, there's scope with these books. There's scopes with, with what it is. But for me, number one, 1994, it was just a lot of fun and it was just my vibe personally. And so, yeah, so I give it to 1994. And I'm just shocked that the slasher guy, Mutaka, decided to abandon ship and, chuck me under the bus and give 1978 his number one spot but that's fine we're all friends here and I, it's, isn't it interesting though because obviously it's, it's handing over to ben now all of our number ones are all completely different films so ben our entire rankings are completely different we yeah. were supposed to <laughs> come up with an agreement on what this this should should be but none of our choices overlap so i don't i don't, I don't know i don't know if we're going to be able to do it because for me, by far and away, no contest. Fear Street Part 3, 1666, is my favorite in the trilogy. It had an interesting first half. Again, probably not the most interesting. It, it could have been better. Could have been maybe shorter. Could have been longer. Could have been more interesting. But what they did do, I really worked for me. It only really dragged for the first maybe 10 minutes until we started to, to get into the story, to get into the Sarah Fear mythos and once we did it never stopped and when i paused i went to the bathroom and it said we have an hour left and i was like how this it was just hung and then it the, the title card fear street part 1994 part two i just thought that was so cool and i really really loved watching all of the characters from all the other films come together to stop good who was evil i liked that line i didn't think it was too bad i didn't even it know it was cheesy <laughs> i didn't even know it was it i just how she was trying to say, like, you know, Campbell is evil. Like, I think she was just saying it like last name, 
but it came across that way really cringy. Didn't even know it didn't even happen for me because I was just still in such a state of shock seeing this guy from all the films who you think he has like a bit of a chip on his shoulder or whatever. And he's good at the end of the day. No, he wasn't. I just thought that was really, really cool. The twists had me just my mind blown and made me look at the entire series differently. It's exactly what I wanted from this movie. I wanted to I wanted this final film to really put everything else into perspective and to really make me think about everything I'd known up until this point. And I, and, and I truly did have to forget everything that I knew. I thought it was perfect for me. Number one, 8.5 out of 10 is Fear Street Part 3, 1666. No contest. I hope that they continue with the Fear Street. Um, I hope they continue with some type of series because um, the books, while it's all based and has some type of reference to Sarah Fear, they all do eventually have their own path that they go on. Um, so I like the idea of an anthology series. Just keep Ryan Murphy away from it because I don't really see the same people cast over and over. Um, I'm just saying. And uh, I, I would like to see some of the other stories that they did. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I hope it continues. I still overall, I liked the series because if, the, if, there, if not for one thing, it was at least consistent. And there are trilogies that I can't say that about. But this had um, a purpose and it was going somewhere. While some parts that may have taken longer for us to get there, I don't know. I, I still enjoyed the series overall. And I was yeah. super excited to see it. I think we all enjoyed it. We can all safely say that we enjoyed the series. Maybe George less so because you prefer <laughs> it as more of a single story. That's fair enough. There's there's a lot of films where you just forget that there are sequels or you just remove some sequels from mine, like Halloween Resurrection, Freddy's Dead, all all that type of stuff. You know, you just wipe it from memory. So that's fair enough. Um Child Play remake. Even... Yeah. yeah I... I like we... I like franchises. Don't get me wrong. I like seek I love see every film I come out of, I'm like, okay, how's there gonna be a sequel to this film? Because I love it. It's just I don't know. This just wasn't the the this just wasn't for me. I'm sorry. No, that is totally fine. Uh so will we just wrap it up there? Because I, I'm pretty sure we will not come up with a ranking. There is no ranking that I will allow on this podcast that doesn't have 1994 first. So either way, I will edit it that 1994 comes first. So it doesn't. That's a dick move. No, I think, but that's good. You know, I I think, you know, there will be time. I I think that makes it more, you know, realistic. Sometimes you can't come to agreements with people and some people have taste in films and others don't. And, you know, oh. it's evident that, you know, some of us, some people don't have taste in, in, in films. So I think, you know. Yeah, we can... British people. I just, no, don't I even care. I'm not, I'm not rising to any of those, that slander. <laughs> I'm, when they go low, guys, we go higher. I agree. I don't think there's a official horror hour ranking for this. You know, especially because it's a trilogy as well. I think when it comes to singular films, we might be able to give it a, you know, an overall score. But I think when it comes to, to franchises and trilogies and films where multiple films, it's going to be a lot difficult because we all have our own personal favourites and things. So, and that's what keeps things exciting and interesting. We all seem to disagree <laughs> a lot of the time. So, yeah. I think, but we can agree on a couple things, though. Um, overall, I think the director, she did a great job. Yeah. Hopefully. I don't know. She, yeah. I looked a little forced she there, did. George. You're like, no, she did. She did a really good job in 1994. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, she did it. I, I, I like the directing of it. I just didn't. Um, the story wasn't. Fair enough. And the soundtrack. I thought um, in yes. all of them, I thought either the score or the um, the songs, I thought those were great choices. So yeah. we can at least have some some things we agree on, maybe not rankings. I can't help it if I keep watching 1978. It's so much fun. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, actually. Really do enjoy that one. So <laughs> all right. you guys are dicks. <laughs>
minutes, you know. All right. <laughs> we'll wrap up then. <laughs> so that's that's all for today's um, episode of the Horror Hour. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, join us next week uh, when we actually get to chat with uh, Alex Vincent and Christine Elise McCarthy, uh, the stars of Child's Play 2 and the upcoming Chucky series. Um, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Uh, and if you haven't already followed us on social media, you can. Um, we're at the Horror Hour TV and that'll keep you up to date with the latest news. Um, and you know, you can tweet us hashtag the horror hour. And just maybe if you want, give us some topics, what your rankings might be on, uh, fear street. And also just, again, who's super excited about this interview. Cause I know I am. It's exciting stuff. Yes. It's, it's very be, exciting stuff. It's going to be a good one. So make sure yeah, to keep an eye out for that next week. All right. So um, once again, thanks for listening. Um, We'll see you next week. 1978 was the superior one. Thank you very much for listening. 1994 was the superior one. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm not going to tell you what was the best because you all know it was 1666. So bye bye. I'm ending this now. (laughs) You have been listening to the horror hour. And you can also follow our YouTube channel, where we will be posting behind-the-scenes footage, video highlights, and full interviews.